Hello, my name is Mark Reed. And as air gunners, we run into problems like this all the time where we have issues that we really don't know the answer to, so we'll go to forums and do massive searches online to try to find the answer. And sometimes we just find um, written answers instead of visual ones. So I'm gonna try to go through the changing of uh, Air Force tank valve from an old style to a new style so that I can use the ring lock system. I had the good fortune of coming across a used Condor the other day and um, I need to upgrade it so that I can control the power a little bit more. So let's work through it together. This is something I've never done before so it'll be very interesting to find out. Okay here we have the tank. It's completely degassed. When I called Air Force, they recommended shooting the gun down until it degassed itself, which was somewhere around two or 300 PSI. I also want to secure it, but I don't want to scratch or bend the tank. So I took uh, a two by four and used a two and a quarter inch wood cutout to cut a circle, which was then split in half. And it gives a very good secure, firm connection to the vise so that it's not going to twist. So the first step is I want to take off the gauge. And we'll remove the, the foster nipple. Okay, now this is probably the most critical piece in removing the valve. And this is a very inexpensive steel shaft collar that I ordered on Amazon. And when it arrived, it had a grub screw, a, fifth, a 5 16 inch grub screw here, which I've replaced with a bolt, 5 16 inch bolt. That will also accommodate this recessed hole within the valve to make it easy to turn. Like that. Now, what I've found is when I try to put this, this is a, a one and a quarter inch internal diameter shaft collar. I'll put the link below. But when I try to put it around the collar of this valve, it doesn't fit exactly because there's a little piece that sticks out right here. And I don't even know what that does, but I'm gonna remove that. And so I've got a, um, a bit that fits it just right. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. Otherwise, that shaft collar will not slide like it needs to. So this is what it looks like. We'll set it aside. Now, let's see here. Okay. There we go. Okay. The shaft collar goes just right. And I'm going to screw it into that recess in the valve. Yeah. I'm just going to hand tighten that. Okay, now, I don't know how much pressure it takes to dislodge this. We're gonna try just to tap it a little bit and see what happens here. Ah, there we go. All right, awesome. Very good, never done this, so very happy with how this is going so far. Take off this shaft collar. Okay. All right, okay. Very good, okay. All right, that looks good. Well, here's my, my new valve, which I ordered from Air Force. And this one will accommodate the ring lock system, which also has to be purchased along with the valve. So, what they recommended at Air Force and what they use at Air Force themselves in replacing valves 
is Dalcornium 111, which is also known as Molly Coat. And I also found this on Amazon. So we'll use that lightly to lube the threads of the valve before I screw, before I screw it back in. Okay, I've lubed the threads very lightly with Molly Coat, and I'm going to go ahead and screw it in. There is an O-ring with this. I'm just going to hand tighten this. Okay. And that's it. I think that was pretty easy. Overall, I think you have to have the right materials to do this. I think this, this shaft collar makes all the difference. And, and you can find these online as valve removal tools but you'll pay a whole lot more, at least twice as much than just getting your own shaft collar at the right size, one and a quarter inch internal diameter shaft collar. And then you have to have the bolt. The grub screw certainly wouldn't work. So um, that's it. Pretty easy, very happy. That was much easier than I thought it was gonna be. So hope everything goes well for you. Thanks for joining in. Bye-bye.